involved in the mobile video space since before there was a mobile video space uh, for almost 10 years now. Our company. So you're been almost around. like helping to create the market. Yeah, I mean we've, in a large, to a large degree, created it. Um, about six years ago, we were the first to launch uh, mobile television in the United States, uh, live TV, cable-like package. Uh, since then, we've grown to um, to really become the market leader in the space and. Uh, so in continuing to see just incredible growth of the service. I mean, one of the things that we talked about on the panel was that the mobile video market is now really growing out of its novelty phase, which was propelled us through the uh, first several years that it was just a very cool thing to have on your phone and show to your friends. And now we're really seeing, um, while our subscriber growth continues to grow at a nice trajectory, our usage growth is growing even stronger and faster, which tells us that our subscribers are using the service more often and finding more utility out of it. So let's take a step back. Uh, how do people get your service? I mean, are you striking deals with AT&T and Verizon and Sprint? Exactly. So we, you know, our, our service is available on almost every phone in the United States, um, but it can come in different forms. So on a Sprint phone, it's Sprint TV. And it's a preloaded application. It's the central TV application on Sprint So it's phones. almost white labeled. It's totally white labeled. Okay, yeah, cool. we're an end-to-end -end service operator for operators. Um, in some cases, we also do our product as a branded Mobi TV product. Um, but our preference is to really be powering and helping the carrier uh, create their own TV experience. Okay, so I have uh, iPhone with AT and T service. Yep. So iPhone is a little bit of an anomaly where we haven't actually launched Mobi TV, our subscription-based product, uh, because Apple doesn't support subscriptions um, as a billing model. Uh, but what we have done is we've launched the Ultimate Fighting Championship application. We've launched the NBA application, League Pass, Live Games. We've launched a Notre Dame app. We do many of the top selling sports applications on the iPhone. So you, you said the NBA, so I'm assuming you're, you're almost the, the mobile engine that the NBA uses. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so we've licensed, the, we worked with the NBA to create the product. Um, it's available on iPhone and Android and we'll be porting it to other platforms uh, soon. It's one of the, it's $40 for the whole season. And it's, uh, even at that price point, it's one of the top downloaded app, paid applications in, uh, in iTunes. And does that mean that, for example, I live in New York, I'm from Boston, I could watch all the Celtics games? In uh, New York, yes, you could. Okay. You may have, R depending real, on the blackout time? restrictions, yes, live. Okay. Yeah, so it, almost it, the only games that wouldn't be delivered are the games that are subject to blackout, but otherwise, um, and that's the same as it is, you know, on your cable at home. So. so it seems like in a way you're the technology platform for a specific content brand like the NBA, but then you're also almost like the mobile version of a cable provider in the sense that you are striking deals with a whole bunch of content providers, packaging them all together, selling a subscription, giving everybody a piece of the pie, and then you're also a white label cable provider for like the sprint example yeah that's exactly right and and in, in the sprint example we're actually what we're doing is we're actually creating the entire ecosystem for sprint so within sprint tv there are several in fact almost 40 different premium channel offerings um, many of which we're aggregating some of which sprint aggregates the content and creates but we've created the platform by which you know premium channels and and content can be discovered so one of the things I, I keep hearing like a broken record, and I don't think as much at this conference, but a lot of other media industry conferences, and especially when you have kind of uh, online publicate, like new media publications that maybe didn't start with print. So, you know, the Wall Street Journal example of an old media publication right. that now has a website, Huffington Post, yep. you know, only new media, and people always talking about how content wants to be free. Yep. But you have a very different model, which is, we're going to package together a bunch of really good content and you're going to pay us for it every single month. Well, we, you know, we're, we believe in free content. We believe in the open internet and that there should be a, available content for free. Um, but we're also huge believers and probably spent more of our focus on the premium content that people do pay for. ESPN, live sports, NBA games. Um, that tends to be sort of the, the content that we focus on. 
Um, but at the same time, we feel like the, the two aren't mutually exclusive, that there should be on every phone a TV, a unified TV application that allows me to turn on, and whether I'm subscribed to anything or not, I can get some content. If I'm subscribed to something, maybe I'm subscribed even at, a, at the lowest level just to a data plan that the carrier um, gets compensated for, that there's some, that's a form of subsidy. So now we can go out and through ad supported and maybe a little bit of, you know, a small amount of money, go aggregate some content, some valued content. Um, in the case of Sprint TV, when you subscribe to a Sprint, Sprint data plan, you actually get access to the NFL network. The NFL network is something that Sprint as a company has sponsored, so they have those rights. Now they want to extend those rights to all of their subscribers. Sprint TV is one of their vehicles for kind of getting that content out to their subscribers. So anyone with a data plan on Sprint can watch the NFL game tonight on, on NFL network. Because it's Thursday night, that's right. And they're it's starting Thursday to play night, Thursday night right. games. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Um, and that they don't have to pay extra for. But while they're in there, they may decide that they want to get ESPN and some, you know, MSNBC and Fox News and other channels that are part of an extended basic package that they're willing to pay 5 or $10 a month to, to add those channels to their experience. Yeah, so in, in this case, Sprint is subsidizing the content in the same way that sometimes they'll subsidize the acquisition of a phone. Exactly. And I guess their hope is that somebody gets the NFL for free that Sprint made possible but then yep. they'll be like wow this is cool if i can watch the nfl for free what else can i check do? out what I, exactly exactly well okay. and if you think about it the carriers are some of the biggest advertising spenders in in the u.s i mean they spend massive amounts of money and they spend them on the networks with nfl you know if you watch an nfl game you're likely to see a sprint advertisement what sprint is doing and what all the carriers are doing is they're actually leveraging those ad buys to say you know because we're such a big sponsor of the NFL, shouldn't we be able to provide the NFL network to our subscribers as part of this big sponsorship? Um, so we see similar examples where, you know, AT&T is a big, big sponsor of the Olympics and March Madness and the Masters. And uh, Verizon is a big sponsor of uh, NHL. So as these operators spend these, you know, dollars for primarily for the media benefit and that they're targeting their subscribers, the, um, the added benefit can be if they negotiate it right that they can get some rights that they can deliver to their subscribers. Once they've done that, they need some vehicle or mechanism to get it out to their subscriber base. And then once they're doing that, there's opportunity to upsell into other services. Yeah. So what's um, what's your growth been like in terms of the subscriber base? I mean, can you share numbers or? Yeah. I mean, the last time we've we've announced any subscribers, we were at seven million subscribers, okay. uh, and, and those are all on paying that? subscribers. That was. Um, uh, that was a while ago. I mean, we're well over that now. And we haven't made another announcement, but we're beyond the next big announcement we would have made. Do you want to break some news? <laughs> no, I'm not breaking <laughs> any news. But we're, you know, our subscriber, let's put it this way. Our subscriber growth continues, you know, to be as strong as ever. Um, and like I said earlier, our usage growth is even stronger. So. Are, you, are you focused purely in the U.S. market? Primarily, we okay. uh, we do services with Canadian operators and a few Latin American operators, but uh, the the vast majority of what we do is in the U.S. Now we are looking overseas, but as a small company, we you know, and one of the earliest sort of pioneers in the U.S. market, we wanted to make sure that we didn't spread ourselves too thin, and you know, lose the market share and leading leading position that we had here in the U.S. Have you done any deals? I mean, it, it seems like you're you're basically taking the television experience and making it available on the cell phone, but have you done any deals with maybe web-only content or video companies? I mean, it, it could be like a blip, it could be a revision three. Um, to, yeah, not to pull all, that in as part of the subscription. It's a great question. Not all of our content is the exact same content you get on cable. In fact, we've created a lot of what we call kind of made for uh, mobile TV channels. Um, some of our, uh, some of the, in, in the early days, a lot of it was done out of necessity because we couldn't get, you know, the cartoon rights, et cetera, from Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network. So we created our own cartoon channel. Um, we've done and, and blip. When you say you created your own cartoon channel, did you actually find people who were kind of young and eager and creating cartoons and saying, hey, Let's a little bit license of, this, let's pay you per episode. We just went out and licensed the content directly and created created a brand and a channel. So we created a, a channel called Toon World TV. 
Another thing that we do that I think is interesting is um, there really is no source in the traditional TV space for music videos. Um, MTV doesn't really play, they've moved to long form content. Um, so we work directly with the labels to create music video channels. Music video channels tend to be very popular channels in our in our service. So we we create a, I think about ten channels of music video genre based. So the hip hop channel, the exactly. alt rock channel, exactly, exactly. But but to answer your your original question, we've also we've um, we've done a channel for CNET. We did a channel for Blip. We've done um, channels. Uh, trying to think what other uh, internet, primarily internet-based channels uh, we've done, but we've, we've experimented with it, yes. With, with the labels is, because uh, I see them getting value in their music videos out there, so are they paying you, or are you paying them? Is it kind of a net We're paying neutral? Them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they want to be paid for it. We'd love to get paid, but yeah, okay. they're, they, those days are over. Yeah, they're yeah. finally realizing, wait, this is content. Yeah, exactly. We can monetize it. Yeah, exactly. Especially since nobody's yeah. buying the music itself. Yeah, yeah. No, and so we, we, we pay them. It adds value, and we're willing to pay, you know, for the value that it provides. Uh, any kind of interesting innovations on the horizon or... You know, a, a big part of what we're focused on at Moby TV is, um, you know, not just replicating the TV experience that you have at home, but really making it a, a unique experience. What we're doing is we're repurposing a lot of the content because that content has high value, but we want to take the experience beyond sort of just an EPG guide. So a big part of what we do um, in a lot of our products and services is sort of meshing that TV experience with you know, metadata and personalization and recommendations so that you can have, the phone is a very personal device. So now you can have a much more personalized experience with your TV. I'll give you two examples. Um, one example is, you know, we launched a financial news network um, package. And instead of just offering, you know, Bloomberg, Fox Business, and CNBC, what, that, what the service allows you to do is actually get stock quotes and uh, tell us, create a watch list of companies you want to watch. Then it and uses is that like that, an application that you built? It's an application that we've built okay. within our TV experience so that as a, as a subscriber, now we know what companies and industries you're really focused on. So instead of just tuning in and watching the feed live, you can do that, of course, but you can also go into your watch list and watch the con look for the content that's organized around what's unique to you. Okay, so, so that brings up some issues and challenges. So that means that you need to work with Fox Business, CNBC. We need the we need meta tags. We need the information to be tagged properly. We need to be, and we're actually indexing and doing a lot of that ourselves to, to so, kind so, of so better what you'll, with you'll watch a full ep or not you personally, but a, a full episode of uh, Squawk Box or whatever the show is, and be exactly. like, okay, they talked about Microsoft, they talked about exactly. Cisco, they talked about Procter & Gamble. And then if you're a subscriber and you are tracking Microsoft stock, when you go into your watch list, you click Microsoft and it'll show you all Just the segments. related videos to Microsoft and when they came in and what the time was. That's cool. So, so instead of having to watch the full half hour, hour long program, I can just watch a minute right. clip. Yep. And we are counting on our content providers to kind of break down their content. Uh, we're not breaking it down for them because that's they wouldn't allow us to do that. They do that work themselves. But but currently, when you said currently your team is tagging, we're MSFT doing an, and we're, well, they're doing the 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 initial pass on metadata, and then we're doing another pass on it just to kind of validate and verify. What we don't want to be doing is you know there's a lot of um, uh, opportunity to kind of improve it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I yeah. guess for you it'd be fantastic if they did everything and did it well so that, that you would be ideal. Anything. Yeah, that would be ideal. And the other application, of course, is you can see how you would extend that into sports. So now I have a favorite team, you know, I have maybe a fantasy league team, etc. I can, you know, we aggregating, we have all access to all the VOD and live signals from all the content providers. Now we can kind of organize that around what's relevant to you. So I could be like Randy Moss and it would pull in the same format, exactly. a clip uh, from ESPN, yep. from Sports Center, a clip from uh, you know NBC coverage of uh, Sunday Night right. Football. Exactly. Yeah. That's kind of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. Cool. All right. Well, All right. Paul, I appreciate it. Yeah. Great meeting you Thanks too. Thanks for Thank sitting you. down. Now you can get back to your sandwich. Yes. <laughs> All right. So part two of the turkey wrap, here I come. <laughs>